This is Carl Palachuk, and you're listening to the SMB Community Podcast, produced by and for the Small Biz Thoughts community. We are dedicated to making every IT professional a successful IT professional. Welcome to another SMB Community Podcast. I am joined once again by my longtime friend, Chip Reeves. How are you, sir? I'm good, Carl. How are you? Very good. So Chip is with Bigger Brains, but he started out, a lot of people know him as the founder and I guess CEO of Computer Troubleshooters. Do you, are you still associated with them? Do you have a, an office? Only barely. Uh, <laughs> I, I still am, am part owner of, of an MSP that's part of the Computer Troubleshooters franchise, but it, it's a tenuous connection at best these days. Okay. All righty. So, uh, Right now, and actually for quite a while now, you've been running Bigger Brains, mm-hmm. and that's at getbiggerbrains.com. We'll put a link to that here, and uh, folks can check it out. Uh, why don't you give us an overview of what that's all about? Sure. Well, Bigger Brains really came about from uh, some conversations we were having inside Computer Troubleshooters back around 2012. And just to kind of set the stage with computer troubleshooters, we were and and they are an IT franchise, which means that uh, we have a head office, which was me and my staff. And then there are franchisees at 1.450 franchisees who are out there actually doing the service business. And our job at the headquarters at the franchisor is to basically help them be successful, right? So we're negotiating vendor deals and we're creating marketing collateral. And I think more importantly, we're always looking at the business model and looking at, you know, what can we refine? How do we improve things to help them be more profitable to you know, work, uh, you know, work smarter, not harder and all that sort of thing. And one of the things that came up in 2012 is we were looking at our portfolio of solutions and, you know, we had the, the cloud solutions, we had the security solutions, the antivirus, the backup, the BDR, Uh, all of the RMM tools and the PSAs. We had all of that and we were kind of looking at, okay, what else, what else do we need? What else do our clients need? You know, what else are there, are we getting requests for that we can't currently meet? Um, Where else is there a profit opportunity uh, for, uh, for our IT franchises out there? And one of the things that came up in conversation was training, uh, end user training. Uh, It it wasn't, you know, a, a, a big thing. It wasn't like every customer was asking for it, but we did get you know, regular requests along the lines of, uh, hey, can you show me how to do this in QuickBooks? Uh, How can I learn how to use Excel? Um, You know, can you teach me Windows? Uh, All of that sort of thing. Cybersecurity training, of course, uh, as well. And we didn't have a good solution for that. You know, there were certainly, you know, some online platforms like lynda.com back then, uh, or TrainSignal, which is now a plural site. But TrainSignal or plural site was really geared more towards the technicians. Uh, and Linda had a lot of stuff, but not necessarily, um, you know, the exact topics we were looking for. And there wasn't really a resale opportunity with, with Linda. And we started looking at the financials of what a, a training platform might look like. Uh, so if an MSP had their own training platform that they could sell to their customers uh, or bundle with a service plan, you know, what would that look like? How would the costs work? What would the, the profit be? And it was actually really profitable on paper and, and in reality. I mean, if, you, if you're selling training, if you do it right, there can be as much as a 95% profit margin. On wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, compared to, you know, it's, it's kind of the inverse of a lot of the margins that we get, especially on you know, the hardware side of the business, if there is a hardware side of the business anymore. So we started doing some, some research and some planning into that. Around the same time, it was also a good time for me to exit computer troubleshooters. And so I kind of took those ideas and turned it into Bigger Brains, which is now a, um, an online training platform that MSPs can sell or bundle with their service plans. And I would change the URL that you gave out, though. The GetBiggerBrains.com is our public site. We have a secret MSP site uh, at BiggerMSP.com. Ah, BiggerMSP.com. Very good. All right. So we'll make sure we put a link to that. <laughs> so um, is this something that's primarily for newbies like uh how do i use excel versus um advanced people who are like okay how do i get more out of excel how do i take excel to the next level well we get kind of both extremes uh, a lot of our traffic these days are um people looking for office 365 and it's usually because uh there's a migration you know right that their company is just adopting office 365 their msp is moving them on to office 365 
Uh, and it may, you know, maybe they're coming off of uh, G Suite or maybe they're coming off of you know, a local exchange server or a pop server or whatever. And so that they, they want to get up to speed uh, or their manager wants them to get up to speed on all the stuff they can do inside Office 365. So we see a lot of that and that's kind of more at the basic side. But then we also get a lot of power users, especially with Excel, who, you know, the, 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 there are certain people when Excel is an important part of your job, who know that there's a lot of power under the hood that they're not tapping into and they want to learn more. Right. Uh, and um, it, it's crazy when you look at the statistics for people who are looking for training, the number of people who are looking for Excel training is more than 10 times more than all of the other Microsoft Office applications combined. So the, the market for Excel training in particular is huge. And so as a result, we actually have, I think it's 11 or 12 different Excel courses now. Uh, starting with the basics, going through advanced, and then people still wanted more. So we started doing special topic courses like Excel for project management, Excel data analytics, Excel creating dashboards, and that sort of thing. Right. And so talk a bit about the format of the class, because it's very different than what I see elsewhere. Yeah. So, well, my, my original plan kind of fell apart. Um, <laughs> my, my original plan for bigger brains, I, we didn't want to create training. We, we thought, you know, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. We're going to create a platform for MSPs and IT service providers to sell the training, but we're going to license the training from somebody else. And there were two flaws with that original plan. Uh, one flaw was I really needed to get the cost down to where it could be less than 10 cents per user per month because I wanted, I wanted it to be a no brainer for an MSP to be able to just include it as part of a service plan. And so it really needed to be down to pennies per user. And every vendor that we talked to, you know, this was a very different model than they were used to. They're used to charging, you know, several dollars per course per user. Uh, and I wanted a library of courses so that the financials just made no sense. Uh, but also we had focus groups with uh, some IT professionals, some education professionals, some business professionals, and some comedians, actually, and one professional storyteller. Uh, this is back in 2012, where we looked at training from about 20 different vendors. And what I told the focus groups was, we're, we're looking for what you guys like and what you don't like, and we're basically trying to choose the one that we're going to sell. And after two weeks or two weekends, uh, the group came back and said, well, we don't like any of it. Uh, it's boring. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, you know, dry, it's hard to understand. It's, there were a lot of different reasons. So we kind of went back to square one. We did a lot of research into how people learn and what makes training interesting. And why is it that people think that uh, live training, like classroom training or workshops or webinars are more interesting than e-learning, you know, the, the canned training, the, you know, pre-recorded training. And, uh, what we found was that there are some biological things going on when you're taking a live class, especially if it's a, uh, an in-person class, but even a webinar, there's a certain amount of emotional engagement with the teacher uh, and some social engagement with the rest of the class that uh, it, it helps facilitate the learning process. Uh, you know, especially when you can ask questions to the teacher, the teacher can ask you questions. Even if the teacher asks a question of somebody else in the class or if somebody else in the class asks the teacher a question, there's a biological response that happens in our brain where our brain tries to think of the answer. Uh, and just that action of trying to think of the answer, whether we get it right or wrong, uh, helps our brain to say, okay, this is important. I'm going to lock this information away because, you know, Carl had to think about this a couple of times. So I'm going to make sure it's available for him next time he goes to think about it. And so that, that social interaction that happens in a classroom, even if we're not directly a part of it, uh, really improves um, the effectiveness of training. It also improves the engagement of training. It makes people more interested in, in continuing the training and paying more attention to it. And so we, uh, we developed a format, which is still unique in the industry. We call it the teacher learner format, where all of our courses are filmed in a TV studio and they're all filmed with two people on camera. So you've got one person teaching another and that lets us replicate some of those benefits of the classroom environment. So we can replicate the dialogue. We can represent, uh, replicate the questions and answers. We can bring in some humor. Uh, we can bring in some use cases. So, you know, we'll oftentimes have the learner saying things like, uh, my boss has asked me to do this. How can I do it? And so we'll actually walk through the process of, you know, creating this type of graph in Excel or, or whatever the case may be. And uh, knock on wood, it's worked pretty well. Uh, we've been, uh, we started off as, a, as a, a platform for IT consultants, 
but pretty quickly we were discovered by a lot of training companies who uh, <laughs> now sell us to their corporate clients. And so we, uh, we do a lot of uh, work with clients like United Airlines and Mitsubishi. And uh, I was just uh, emailing uh, Mitsubishi a few minutes ago and also Yeti Coolers, Georgia Power, just some, you know, some crazy big companies that I would have never dealt with when I was an MSP, but they work well for our, our training side. Uh, and we've been honored to win uh, some uh, pretty nice awards. E-Learning Magazine has named our Microsoft training the best IT skills training for the last five years, actually, in a row. So uh, knock on wood, that, that, that teacher-learner format has worked out well for us. So um, for a specific class, let's just pick Word, Excel, whatever you want. But um, is it I sit down and watch a one-hour video, five one-hour videos, uh, 55 four minute videos like what, what am I gonna what am I gonna find when I sign up for a class well everybody likes to, to consume content in different ways uh, and, and it took me a long time to get comfortable with that verb consume I, I don't know why that just uh, it bothered me the first time I heard it but uh, but people do consume learning in different ways you know there's times uh, and if, I know in my own experience where I'm really focused on something. Uh, I really, I want to sit down and spend a couple of hours uh, learning how to edit video or, or you know, learning how to, uh, you know, administer Office 365 or, or whatever. Uh, and in those cases, uh, you know, all of our all of our courses are broken out into five to ten minute lessons. So if you've got a couple hours and you want to dive into it, then you're going to go through you know ten to twenty lessons. On the other hand, there's times when you know you want to do kind of a, a daily study sort of a thing and maybe you know five minutes here, 10 minutes there on a lunch break or first thing in the morning or, or whatever. And, and our courses are set up that way too. Of course, everything today has to be mobile friendly. So uh, you know, maybe you know, people get on their phone the first thing in the morning and on their commute into work, they're you know, listening to a course, hopefully not while they're driving, but you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways they can consume it, but the courses are flexible enough to accommodate really just about any way somebody wants to access them. Right, so uh, seems to me like I guess part of your biggest competition, quote unquote, would be the fact that I could go to YouTube, where mm. in YouTube, I, I rarely, I can't imagine me looking for something that's like, tell me everything about Excel or tell me how to get the most out of Word. But what I would find is, how do I use a pivot table to get data from Excel into um, you know, a Word uh, label uh, program or whatever? Um, yeah. that's a how to thing. And so I just go straight to YouTube and I put in my keywords and it miraculously shows me how to <laughs> eliminate duplicates or whatever I'm trying to do. Is yeah. that your competition or is it other courses that are I don't know, maybe more difficult or more expensive? Uh, it's definitely some of both. Uh, I mean, the, the whole training industry and it, it's been kind of weird for me to get shift from you know going to IT industry events to going to training industry events but they're they're very similar but you know they have their own differences the whole training industry is um, considering what to do about what they call just in time training which is that exactly what you describe i have a need right now i need to learn how to do this right now and 99% of the time google or youtube is the go to for that sort of situation and understandably so it's easy it's fast it's right there uh, but that also requires uh, a couple of things. It, it requires that you have an idea of what it is that you need, right? If you've never used Excel, or if you haven't used, you know, certain advanced features in Excel, like if you've never done a pivot table, then it can be harder to know what it is you're looking for. Uh, and it can be harder to know what questions to ask to get you to In that. part because you don't know the words, right? You, you know what you want to do, but you don't know what, a, you've never heard of a pivot table. Well, yeah, I, the, just the concept. You know, I mean, there's there's a lot of people, uh, even in the IT industry, for example, th there are a lot of technicians that I work with, um, both at my, my former MSP and, and also with other MSPs, who have never really taken a look at a lot of the applications that are in Office 365. You know, they've never looked at Planner. Uh, they may never have looked at Teams. Uh, they may never have looked at uh, Outlook Groups. Uh, almost, no, almost nobody's looked at Kaizala. Uh, and, and so these are areas that are just completely, you know, off their radar. Uh, and so being able to go through a more of a structured class is kind of a good place to start to get that kind of foundational knowledge. And then if you have questions later, then yeah, YouTube and Google is, is a good solution. Uh, we're working on some solutions. We do have some content on YouTube, not our whole courses or anything, but we do have some content there as well. 
Uh, but yeah, the, the, there's a time and place for everything. And so the, when you have that you know, moment of need question, YouTube and Google is definitely the, the, you know, the number one choice in a lot of cases. Uh, but we're working on apps and solutions to try to make it easier to, to take down that barrier of, uh, you know, having to remember the password and log in to go get to the training site to actually go search for stuff. And then also wondering if the search in the training site is going to be as relevant as the stuff you get on YouTube. There's a lot of these kind of barriers to, to change that we're looking to, to bring down. And so is, quite frankly, the rest of the training industry. So we'll, we'll, we'll continue improving in that area. But Right now, it's more the structured training is, is where we make the most sense. When somebody wants to learn a new skill, when they want to improve their own um, position in the marketplace, the, their own resume, uh, their own standing with their boss, whoever their boss may be, uh, then you're usually looking for some kind of a structured class where you can get a good overview of the topic, come away with a certificate, and know that you've got a pretty you know comprehensive understanding of whatever the topic was. Right. So the, uh, the price point that you mentioned is this 10, uh, under 10 cents per user per month for each class or how, how, what does that look like? Well, so in the real world, uh, <laughs> i.e. If, if, if it wasn't an MSP, then um, you can buy our content a lot of different ways. There are different training sites that have our content that might sell it per class. On our public website, which uh, we we sell very little through our public website, uh, we literally I think made three hundred dollars last month through the public website. But uh, people can sign up for fifteen dollars a month and get access to the entire library, which right now is about one hundred and thirty courses, about thirty two hundred videos, um, something like three hundred hours of total content right now. Uh, so that's fifteen dollars a month for the whole library. Uh, as an MSP, you're actually reselling that same platform. So if you're using our tools, then you're reselling the whole platform. You're giving your customers access to the whole library. But your cost uh, in low quantity starts around $4 per user per month. Most MSPs are paying somewhere around $0.50 cents per user per month. And in higher quantities, it gets down to around $0.09 cents per user per month. Oh, wow. So it would be feasible for me to roll this into a managed service offering. Exactly. And that's what my MSP uh, is doing. Basically, we're one of the ones that we have a two tier offering. We have a silver and a gold. And part of the upsell for the gold plan is that the gold plan includes uh, unlimited staff training in Microsoft Office and Office 365 and QuickBooks and HIPAA and sexual harassment now and active shooter and all that sort of things. So uh, if, if I sell it, let's say I've got a, a client that's 10 users and a client that's 25 users, um, I pay per client or do I put those together and I get, you know, whatever uh, the, the, the 35 <laughs> user <laughs> price might be. Yeah. So uh, basically what happens on our side is the MSP is paying for a block of users and then they, then they divide those up however they want to. So, okay. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's in subscription tiers. So you're either getting five users, uh, 20 users, 50 users. I forget the tiers, but it's, it's, it's laid out on the site. Okay. Yeah. Standard kind of MSP pricing. And is that something that gives them access to, all the classes? You said like 130 classes? Every class, 130 classes. Uh, you could, we're almost at the point now where you could take an hour of training every day and not repeat yourself for a year. We're, we'll cross that barrier <laughs> sometime in the next month or so. Wow. Okay. And do you have people who are MSPs that use this actually as a selling point to like, hey, if you sign up with me, one of the things you get is this unlimited training? Oh yeah, absolutely. We have about 800 MSPs in the program right now. Uh, and not all of them are active. There's a lot of them that sign up and they kind of have it listed as an option on their website, but it's kind of a when clients request it sort of a thing. But there's probably a hundred or so that are including it with their service plans, uh, just as either a standard feature or like I was doing an upsell to a higher level plan. Right. Well, it seems like if you're going to add it to a bundle, that's probably the best way to do it is basically make it available to everybody. And then you get to bug them and say, Hey, did you take any training this month? Remember, it's all included. Hey, you know, did you take training and did you take training? And how about you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's one of those things that, that there's this odd value proposition with training where training is oftentimes more valuable in the business owner's eyes than it is in the employee's eyes. And so uh, oftentimes what happens is, uh, like even in my case with my MSP, we had a nonprofit that we were trying to sign up. They were a customer of our largest competitor. They were happy with the largest competitor. 
we knew going in that it was kind of one of those we have to get a couple of bids situations. Um, but we went in and uh, we you know made our best pitch. And part of our pitch was uh, that their 35 or 45 employees would have unlimited access to Office and Office 365 and QuickBooks training. And we won. We got the account. And they told us later that it was because being a nonprofit, they have a lot of volunteers and they don't really have time to train the volunteers. And so being able to give them something like that was really valuable. But here's the thing. They didn't actually use it all that much. Uh, in fact, they still have access to it. And I haven't seen them log in at all in six months. <laughs> um, you know, so it, it's one of those things where the, the uh, you know, me being proud of my training, <laughs> I, I want to promote it and I want them to use it. I, I don't want to create training, training that people don't use. But at the same time, if it helped the MSP get the deal, then it did its job. You know, it, it, it got the deal. They're making the money. Um, so whether or not the customer takes the training at that point isn't directly relevant. However, you know, you do want them to see value. So when renewal time comes around, you know, they'll, they'll remember what they're getting. And it's one of more, you know, set of golden handcuffs to keep them you know, tied to you. Right. Well, you know, uh, I'm a huge, huge believer in training and actually in client training. And I believe that part of what we've always uh, benefited from is the, the ability to go into a client's office and provide live training. So we will go into a client's office and we put it into our bundles that you get, you know, uh, a live training every quarter. And, you know, clients, when they do it, they love it. They think it's amazing and spectacular. And then, they don't reschedule and they don't bring you back to the next quarter. And unless you beat them up, it's just, it's, it's not top of mind for them. Um, but this would be something where you could actually take the training, turn around, give the training and then remind them, Hey, you have all this other training, go get it. And they'll just fall more deeply in love with you. Uh, even if they don't take advantage of it. <laughs> so. Exactly. Exactly. The other thing that's interesting about training is that, uh, every time you do it, you learn something, even if it's literally the same material that you learned last time. And, you know, it's just like Chip teaches it instead of Carl teaches it, but you've got just enough difference that uh, you pick up on different things. So uh, training is never uh, wasted as far as I'm concerned. And of course, now that's me being the business owner. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, 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 there's a lot of neuroscience behind that that, that talks about um, it, it, it's called elaboration. So when we're in a classroom uh, or taking a course online or in a workshop or a webinar or whatever, there's a part of our brain that's always thinking about, okay, how would I use this? What would this, how would this be relevant to me? And that's different every time we do it because, you know, the, the, the Carl in 2020 is not exactly the same as the Carl in 2019. There's different things on your mind. You've got different priorities, different, you know, tasks at hand and that sort of thing. Uh, so th there's definitely an advantage to, to retraining. The key is, you know, you don't necessarily want to take the exact same class, uh, but you want to take something in the same area. You know, again, that's why we have 14 different or 12 different Excel courses, because you know, we try to provide as many opportunities as possible for people who want to look at it and think about, okay, how, what would I do with Excel? How would I use this feature and, you know, to make my life easier in what I'm doing? Right. Well, and I can tell you from my experience, if I do something, whatever, four times a year, if I go to YouTube and look it up, the learning is about an eighth of an inch deep. I will never mm -hmm. remember even what menu to go to to find that option again. <laughs> because it, I don't need to, because I just go to YouTube and I say, how do I do this? And it tells me, uh, but I haven't actually learned anything. I'm just, I've accomplished something, but there's nothing permanent about it. Yeah, and, and sometimes that's all you need. And, and you know, it, it all depends on where you are in, in your career and, and you know, what's coming up next. When I made the change to bigger brains, uh, you know, I had a lot of experience with IT. I had a lot of experience in, in you know, managing an IT company, but in understanding training and creating training and editing video, these were all you know, new areas. And, and I knew there were areas that I had to, uh, you know, become good at if I was going to be successful. And now, you know, today we have a lot of staff that does most of that, but, uh, you know, I had to jump in and take some classes and, and do a deep dive to, you know, build up my skills and, and, you know, learn new areas. Right. So with the classes that you're developing, uh, is this something where you expect this to be continued to morph over time? You know, as, as uh, I guess, as people age, there's a new group of people that learn differently uh, as new kinds of people become business owners and the boomers, 
you know, go off into the sunset. Uh, are people, uh, I guess, more open to this kind of online learning? It's an interesting question. I, I mean, the training is definitely always changing. Um, part of that is as we get better at what we do uh, and, and, you know, from a tactical perspective, um, part of it also is as we, the training industry gets a better understanding of how people learn and, and how this generation learns. That, that there's a lot of argument over whether millennials learn differently than, than boomers or Generation X or whatever. Um, some of it is not specific to, say, the millennials or, or Generation Y. It's because of the world we live in today, right? I mean, we live in a world where everybody carries around a rectangle that can give them all the information they need whenever they need it. And that changes their expectation of, uh, again, how they're going to consume training. So uh, it used to be 10 years ago uh, that longer training was okay. You could have a 20 minute video and, you know, people were not necessarily happy with it, but they weren't unhappy with it. Uh, today, anytime my videos go past 10 minutes, I'm going to hear about it. Uh, and, and really we want to keep it somewhere in the five to six minute range is the sweet spot. Wow. Um, and then also things like understanding we built an app last year, which is, is very new for us. Uh, we built a chatbot app called BrainBot, and it was all because uh, we saw some training about how people learn and how the brain decides what to keep and not keep. Uh, you know, if, if, if I as an employer am going to pay for my staff to take a class, and I know there's a 90% chance that they're going to forget everything they learn in that class, what's the point of me, you know, paying for them to take the class? Uh, and yet this is something that's just commonplace in the training industry. And it's, it's, it's because we didn't really have a better way to do it. Um, but there are solutions. There are things that we can do to help our brain understand that this is knowledge I need to keep. Even if it's learning about how to do a pivot table in Excel, and I don't need to do a pivot table in Excel, you know, anytime in the next month, I still want to keep that knowledge in my brain. And so there's things we can do to keep our brain, um, just to bring the information back up, to resurface the information on a regular basis that'll help the brain retain the information. And some of that works back into techniques in the training itself. You know, how do we repeat concepts throughout the training? How do we um, stagger the topics in a certain way? So there's always that kind of refinement we're always working on. Um, are there any uh, examples you can give of MSPs who've used your services particularly well in terms of like either making their clients aware of uh, specific features of say Office 365 or uh, building training into what they offer? It's a good question. And I, I don't know of any specific examples, but we don't get a lot of, of, you know, direct examples of specific customers back from our MSP partners. Um, we do get some and we can kind of tell from the dashboard, you know, which customers are, are growing and, and adding. Um, we know, for example, that uh, there's a sweet spot for training uh, generally, any company that has more than about 50 employees is going to be a good candidate for training. And ironically, also companies that have fewer than five. Uh, there's a weird donut hole around the five to 50 range where um, you know, they're a little too big to be directly focused on their own needs, but they're not big enough yet to have a training budget. You know, there's kind of that weird donut there uh, and things like that. And we, we do get a lot of feedback on uh, what topics people would like to see. Uh, we are, in our case, um, you know, we, we have a focus. We're very end user focused. So we do get a lot of requests from MSPs who want training for their technicians on certain areas. And we're not, a, um, we're not really designed to be for technicians. We do have a couple of uh, Office 365 administration courses coming um, that are kind of more for power users at the end user level and, and will be good for technicians too. But overall, our goal is to provide you know, a pretty comprehensive library for the typical white collar business worker. Uh, give them the software skills they need, give them some of the you know, soft skills they need in terms of you know, sexual harassment training because it's required by law in seven states, uh, and, uh, active shooter training because insurance companies like you to have that, some communication and that sort of thing. But uh, we want to provide a good library for them and keep the focus there. Right. So how is this delivered in terms of the, the website and so forth? Do I send my clients to getbiggerbrains.com? Uh, you could, and some do. It, it all depends on you know, how the MSP wants to engage with us. Um, what I usually recommend is that they integrate, we have, it's pretty easy to integrate our stuff into the MSP's website. So the MSP would have the login page on, on their site. Uh, as far as the customer knows, they're accessing you know, training directly through you know, whatever myMSP.com is. 
uh, and they'll never directly see our website. But you know, there's some MSPs who uh, either don't want to put the time into the website, or this is just kind of a, a you know a side thing they're selling, and it's not a focus area for them. And and that's fine. They can send send them to getbiggerbrains.com also. Very cool. So pretty much they can do whatever they feel is comfortable. What's the easiest way for people to get started with you? If you're an MSP, definitely go to biggermsp.com. Uh, and a lot of times we don't, if you go to the main site, there are some links to biggermsp.com hidden in there, but the pricing we have for MSPs is so much lower than we charge anybody else. Um, right. we, we really kind of hide it. And so we, a lot of times we'll get MSPs who come in through the regular channel and are confused because they see the regular prices and they say, well, I, I heard Chip talking to Carl and he said it was 10 cents and this is trying to charge me $15. So knowing <laughs> that biggermsp.com is the secret door to, to get into the MSP pricing is the best place to start. Very cool. All right. Well, thank you very much for being with us. I appreciate it. And of course, people can also find you on Facebook at Bigger Brains. I think so. <laughs> well, that's what it says on your link. <laughs> I'll believe it then. Very good. All right. Well, thank you, Chip. I appreciate it. It's always good to have you join us. Thank you, Carl. Always a pleasure. Thank you for tuning in to the SMB Community Podcast. If you found this useful, interesting, or fun, please subscribe, share with your friends, and give us a thumbs up on your favorite social media. Please check out the show notes at smbcommunitypodcast.com and give us your feedback.